temperature of the reactor and the temperature of this cooling jacket or the fluid in the cooling jacket. And so if that temperature goes up to 310, you're going to remove less heat. That means the reactor temperature should go up. And that's what you see, right? It goes from 368 to like 376 or something like that. And then the other thing you see is if the reaction temperature goes up, there should be more reaction. The concentration of A, there should be more A consumed. That, that concentration should go down. It does. Okay. And then the final point is because things change with time, you see these changes don't happen instantly. Right? It takes like several hours for these things to, to occur. And so when you guys, unfortunately, I don't think you'll see a lot of this until you take the control class of seniors. The fact that this takes hours to occur is really important. And so one of the things that makes chemical processes as you guys take your classes unique in many ways is they're really slow. So like you, l electrical engineers do stuff too, right? And they're like, how fast does your system take to respond? They're like, 20 milliseconds. You're like, how about you? You're like, 16 hours, <laughs> you know? So, um, so the good news is if, if things are that slow, you have a lot of time to figure out what to do, right? The bad news is if it does something you don't want it to do, it takes a very long time to get it back. And when you guys are seniors, you'll do an experiment in the lab for the distillation column. And that thing is so slow that it, the, the lab people have to start it up in the morning so that it's ready for you to use in the afternoon. And you can maybe do one experiment or two a day. Each takes two hours because it's so slow, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, I'll be up here for a few minutes. Oh, I have your exams. <laughs> now, no, don't even think about approaching this bench right now. So here's the story on the exam.